Good afternoon, I'm hanging out over here at Atlantic Station. So, uh, I got an update today. So I promptly went on and hit this update yesterday. It came in yesterday evening, which was June 28th, 2018. It came in late in the afternoon. I would say uh, probably somewhere around 4 p.m. So anyway, there's a speed limit mode. And also this was on the app as I updated the app as well. And uh, briefly it says uh, this new feature limits the acceleration of your vehicle and allows you to set a maximum speed limit between 50 miles per hour and 90 miles per hour. While your vehicle is in park, you can activate speed limit mode by tapping controls, settings, safety, and security on the touchscreen, or by tapping controls on your mobile app. You must use the same four digit, digit I'm sorry, pin to enable or disable speed limit mode. A notification is sent to your mobile device if your vehicle approaches the set maximum speed. Note, speed limit mode requires mobile app version 3.4.1 or later. And uh, in memory of Barrett Riley. Autopilot, they've updated that a little bit. We've changed the hold steering wheel alert to now display as apply light force to steering wheel to better communicate how autopilot detects your hands on the steering wheel, reducing the frequency of the alert displaying. As a reminder, auto steer detects your hands by recognizing light resistance as the steering wheel turns or from your you manually turning the steering wheel very lightly, which basically means just lightly wiggling it. That's how I usually get it to back off. Traffic aware cruise control. When taking a highway exit, or interchange with Traffic Aware Cruise Control, TACC, turned on, your vehicle decelerates as needed, but will not bring your vehicle to a complete stop. While your vehicle decelerates, the blue circle around the set cruise speed will rotate to indicate this feature is activated. Uh, some more updates to navigation. I don't think I need to really get into that. And mobile connector improvement. If an update is needed for your mobile connector and your vehicle has finished charging, you will see a notification on the instrument cluster indicating that an update is in progress. This update will take approximately two minutes to complete. Well, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't see anything like that, but it's too late now. So I'm going to consider this to be fully charged. 250 is my 100% now. I will go in here and check the, uh, I mean, it's, it, once it starts saying that, you're pretty much done. You can just go on and call it. So go in here to settings and just see what the energy, well, yeah, duh. So yeah, 100%. So that 100% goes to 250 miles, 250 miles, I'm sorry. And this is, of course, on rated, not ideal. Ideal will throw you off in a big way. Let me show you what ideal does. We're not getting 321 miles out of this thing. I can promise you that. So, switch that. Always leave it on rated. I like to go with distance rather than energy. It helps me see. Oh, actually, wait a minute. We're up to 251 now. I guess I'll let it, I'll let it finish out. So maybe it's still 252. I mean, I did a few weeks ago, I did a 100% charge. Actually, Tesla did it, not me. And they got it up to, it was 252. And that was around the 60,000 mile mark. So that's, you know, being that they, they promised on paper 257. And in the beginning, it was actually saying 260. 251 after this many miles, I guess, you know, there's nothing to really complain about, so, but that is the range. However, I will say that things have been a little strange with the range lately, like sometimes it's better than usual, and I can't just say it's the warm, warmer climate, but 
it's you know sometimes it's worse sometimes it's better you just don't know what you're gonna get but either way I'm certainly glad that I went with a 90d rather than a 75d no offense to anyone with a 75 but hey it is what it is all right I'm gonna have to call it quits I've been here for an hour and 38 minutes gonna have to call it I think this is as good as it gets I think 251 is gonna be my 100% it could creep up to 252 but I'm not gonna get caught here uh, like I did a few months ago playing around talking to other Tesla owners and stuff so that's it my 100% as of basically mid-year of 2018 is 251 miles and one more quick recap here before I put this video together. So the projected range is 184 miles. I've driven 12.5 miles. It's saying I've got 234 out of the 251 that I started with. So you can see there's a little bit of a deficit there, but it's not too bad. It could be a lot worse. Right now my projected range is 206 and I've driven 16 miles, 16.1 miles to be technical, and it's telling me that I've got 231 on the little battery bar. You know, it's important for all of you to know that when I'm going over these these numbers and, and analyzing, you know, the battery consumption, it's not complaints by any means, it's just me observing and, and you guys being able to experience experience these things vicariously through me. Um, I realize that this channel and the videos that I post could be even more informative, but I think they are pretty informative. I think they're they're a lot more informative than others video other people's other Tesla owners' videos, and I think that there are Tesla owners who have videos that are far more informative than mine and they get they get into the numbers really deep and to all that I say that's why there's there's variety here you can you can watch my channel and I think you can get things from my channel that you wouldn't get from the other channels and vice versa so it's up to you uh, and this is me basically answering to to someone who came on here saying, oh, Rich Rebuilds is more uh, informative. Well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's more informative. I think he's giving you a different angle of what you are dealing with, with as a Tesla owner if you salvage a Tesla. Um, I'm giving you my experience as a Model X owner who is somewhat of an early adopter. And that is the difference between me and rich rebuilds so we're both black who cares i mean those things don't really don't matter in the grand scheme of things we're all we're all walks of life here as tesla owners and we we have all different types of professions and and things like that so i think it's funny when people get on there and, and say things and another thing i want to mention as well um you know one of you know i watch a lot of the other Tesla owners of their videos I you know I, I do pay attention and focus on what's going on out there and you know and I see that some of these guys when they're trying to be objective or they're they're being honest about their experience and these people come out of the woodwork and they just you know swarm on them give them all kinds of crap I don't think that's cool either now can we stop that from happening I, absolutely not you got to have thick skin if you're out here doing this I get it but you know, being a Tesla owner isn't all daisies and roses and all that kind of stuff. It's not all sunshine all the time. There are dark sides, but you know, that can be said for any auto manufacturer. It's just that when you invest what we invest in these cars, you expect more than what you were dealing with when you were driving, say, a GM or Ford or even a Toyota or Honda. You know, these, these cars... Uh, they have their hangups, but at the same time, they cost a lot less than a Tesla. So that's why 
we say the things that we say. That's why we whine when we whine or complain or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's why we also give credit where credit's due, you know? So there's, there's a lot to be said in, about the world of Tesla and, and what it's like to uh, go through the peaks and valleys with them. So once again, thank you for watching this video and I appreciate you subscribing.